This is Geometry Lesson 3-6, Parallel Lines. To start off the lesson, I want to talk about corresponding angles. So what is a corresponding angle? First of all, in order to talk about corresponding angles, we need three lines. We need two lines with another line going through it. So here I have line M and N, and I have line L intersecting both of those. Line L is what we call a transversal. And when we do that, we get four angles f forming between each of those intersecting lines. So here, when L and M intersect, I get 1, 2, 3, and 4, and when L and N intersect, I get 5, 6, 7, and 8. And when we talk about corresponding angles, we talk about angles that would be in the same position within the intersection. So I like to draw a square around my sets and then I can talk about it top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. And then I can do the same thing over here, top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. So if I want to talk about corresponding angles, they would be angles that would be in the same quadrant. So here I've got top left and top left, so 1 and 5 would be corresponding angles. If I look at the top right, 2 and 6 would be corresponding angles. 4 and 8 would be corresponding. And 3 and 7 would be corresponding. Now we're go I'm going to do an activity on the CAS. And we are going to work to do that in class, but I actually am going to walk through it with you here first. I'm not going to take time for you to set it up. We'll set it up in class, but I want to talk about it here uh, because it, it, it leads into a postulate that we need to discuss. In the next section of this lesson, we want to look at slopes of lines, and particularly slopes of parallel lines. Now in Chapter 1, Lesson 2, we spent a lot of time talking about slopes of lines and we talked about slope-intercept form. So I just want you to remember back to that lesson so we can find the slope of a line given two points if we subtract their y values divided by the x, the subtraction of the x values. We also remember that horizontal lines had a slope of 0 and vertical lines have an undefined slope. And then also I have an example here that I'm just going to work through very quickly because we, we spent quite a bit of time on it. 3x plus 5y equals 12. If I want to find the slope of that, I can go ahead and put it into slope-intercept form. So you can see I work through those step steps. I subtracted 3x from both sides, which gives me 5y equaling a negative 3x plus 12. And then I divided both sides by 5, so that gives me a negative 3 fifths x plus 12 fifths. So that means this is my slope, because that's what m, y equals mx plus b, so my slope is a negative 3 fifths. So now what I want to do, now that we just did that little mini review, I want to look at slopes of parallel lines. So I'm going to do a little calculator activity for you, and we're going to also do this in class together. But for discussion purposes, I'm going to do it now. So here you see I have two lines that I've graphed. The first line has an equation of 2x plus 7, and the second line has an equation of 2x plus 4. Notice that the slope of each of these lines is 2. So these two lines have the same slope, and the graphs appear, the lines appear to be parallel. But let's see what happens if I move this line a little bit. Let's see what happens to the equation. Okay, now I know my lines are not parallel, and look at my slopes are not the same and I can move this around a little bit more. Oops. Once again, just not parallel. So, slopes that are or lines that are parallel have the same slope. So, as you can see here, I have a theorem that says parallel lines and slopes theorem that says two non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. We also have the transitivity of parallelism theorem, and I talked about the transitive property when it, as it pertained to equality, but now we're going to talk about it as it pertains to parallel lines. If you look here, I have three graphs, or I'm sorry, three lines, 
And all three lines appear to be parallel, but if we look at our slopes theorem, parallel lines and slopes theorem, if they have the same slopes, then they're parallel. So these all have the same slopes, so they would be parallel. But the, the theorem says if L is parallel to M, and M is parallel to N, then L has to be parallel to N. So that's how the transitivity of parallelism theorem works. We're going to work more with the slopes of parallel lines in class, so this concludes Lesson 3-6.